Hello everyone, I'm Glitch the Box Links, and today I've got an out of the box challenge for you. Kirby Air Ride debuted on the GameCube in 2003 and was a bit different from most Kirby games. Unlike the normal Kirby platformer, Air Ride aimed to be similar to Mario Kart and provide a racing experience for Kirby fans. It offers three modes and a set of challenges for each, called a checklist in the game. And even though it's a racing game, it did keep one thing from the mainline Kirby games. Copy abilities. While you're racing, you can inhale enemies to get their ability. So what would happen if you took the main Kirby mechanic out of Kirby Air Ride? Can you beat Kirby Air Ride Air Ride Mode without eating enemies? The rules of this run are very simple. Kirby is not allowed to swallow any enemy, and I'll be completing the full checklist in Air Ride Mode. Why not do the other modes, you might ask? Well, the Top Ride checklist doesn't have any enemies at all, and City Trials checklist doesn't require it either. Air Ride Mode is a bit more unique, though, as it specifically has challenges to swallow enemies and use their abilities. While there are a lot of unique goals like getting hit by flaming dragons and grinding on rails, I'm only going to go over the boxes that prove particularly challenging due to the restrictions, or that might appear straight up impossible at first glance. To start out, you're given a single ride machine and 8 courses. None of the checklist is revealed by default and there's no required one to start with. However, I'd recommend starting by trying to unlock the other machines or as many of them as you can. There is no correct order to these, but I decided to race Machine Passage first as I explained the controls in game to my Twitch chat. One thing I'll note about the controls is that there's a drift mechanic, where you can charge a boost while slowing down and increasing your turning ability. However, if you do this and an enemy happens to pass by you, you'll automatically inhale and swallow them without any other button presses. So even in the first race, I did need to face plan a wall to avoid swallowing a willy. I also got lucky and one of the CPUs got the mic ability as I crossed the finish line, unlocking a few goals and a wing star for gliding while completing a race. For the majority of the rideable machines, they're unlocked through pretty easy methods. After completing three races, I unlocked Wagon Star, and after finishing a lap in under a minute in Free Run, I unlocked the Rocket Star. Speaking of Free Run, everything in Free Run is pretty much done as normal since there's no enemies in the mode and the goals don't require any different methods in this run. Some of the other machines you can unlock in parallel. During a standard race on Checker Knights, there are quite a few enemies, and if you kill them by spinning, you can unlock both the Slick Star and Shadow Star. A few other machines are unlocked by simply completing a race or beating a simple time, namely the Turbo Star, Swerve Star, Formula Star, Willy Bike, and Bulk Star. After a few boxes, you'll notice you get a free checkbox, which is added to the left of the screen as a purple box. Do not use these. They aren't against the rules, but if you want to make this run possible, I strongly suggest you don't use any of these for now. An interesting goal I got early on is to swallow 20 enemies and take first place. Wait, what's that? That's against the rules! Oh, but you see. I didn't actually swallow any enemies for this one. If you find any random enemy that doesn't give you a copy ability like a Waddle Dee, and try to inhale it, you'll spit it back out. Notice that Kirby inhales them, and then never swallows before spitting them out. This means Kirby is not actually eating them, in other words, not swallowing them, and therefore completely okay by the rules of this run. For this challenge, doing this in a normal 2 or 3 lap race is actually quite difficult. However, if you bump up the lap counter to something high, like, say, 15, you should clear out this one quickly. And with that knowledge, most of the early game goes quite easily. Besides just playing the game to unlock checkboxes like race every course, the introductory stuff is mostly completing courses, time attacks, or simple goals like breaking walls or finishing first place. The only other notable things about the first 60-ish blocks is that I unlocked the secret course called Nebula Belt. Nebula Belt is very interesting and allows us to finish a particular set of goals that would otherwise be impossible in this run. There are four checkboxes that require you to finish first place with a specific ability. Nebula Belts has a copy chance will that gives any racer that rides over them a random ability. Since I can't get any abilities from eating enemies, my choice of cheese for this goal was to race Nebula Belt and pray to the RNG gods that you get one of the four ones you need to complete each goal. The Needle, Fire, and Wing abilities are all just a matter of chance, but interestingly enough, the Sleep ability is harder than the others. See, Kirby will lose an ability after a short time of getting it, and the Sleep one wears off before you can cross the finish line. But that certainly didn't stop me from coming up with a solution. If you press A right away to get your ability, your ability will wear off much sooner. We can save some time by letting the random timer run out and not confirming an ability, and save even more time by picking a fast machine like the Swerve Star. The combination of both making this one just barely achievable. Celestial Valley gave me a bit of a challenge as well. There's a checkbox for finishing 2 laps in 1 minute and 56 seconds, and while the time goals like this don't seem directly impacted, 
portion of them expect you to get the wing or willy ability in order to make the time. This is certainly not the hardest, but was where I started to see the times become challenging. With the wheelie scooter, you can get a boost by jumping, and some of the spots like the rails and tiny edges can also give you a bit of a speed boost if you have a trouble on this one. There's another scenario where these time goals become harder. In time attacks like on Frozen Hillside, it's not that the expectation is you'll get the wing or willy ability, but that you can drift around corners. See, as I mentioned, if you drift, you'll automatically swallow enemies. If you're running into a corner with enemies, spinning to kill them or just simply hitting the wall are basically the only two options available. Frozen Hillside's time attack has a lot of corners that practically require drifting with most or all ride machines. Losing time in multiple corners by having to avoid eating enemies will slow you down quite a lot. So in this case, I recommend the Swerve Star. The nice thing about the Swerve Star for this time attack is that while it does stop you during your drift, it turns pretty quickly so you have less time than an enemy can be inhaled during. Also, in the time trials, it seems like enemies spawn in the same locations. So if you're struggling, remember their patterns and develop a strategy for each specific section of that track. If you've played the game before, you probably noticed that I didn't name all of the ride machines earlier when I unlocked them. That's because some of them aren't worth directly grinding for. Take Meta Knight, who unlocks by gliding for a total of 30 minutes. These will unlock naturally if you play the game, but if you need them earlier, you certainly can grind for them. Machine Passage had a very interesting goal that I didn't expect to be much harder, but trying to clear the cores without touching the walls is very difficult in this run. I tried a few machines, but Willy Scooter was by far the best for this. The checkbox for this one specifies that you must finish an entire race in Machine Passage without touching a single wall and taking first place. However, it doesn't say how many laps you have to do. So unless you just want to make this checkbox even harder, you can drop the lap counter to one like I did. I also recommend changing the machines the CPUs use to make it a bit easier. If they have particularly fast ones, then it'll be hard to get first while going slower than normal. There are three parts of this track that are particularly difficult. The first is the first U-turn, as there tends to be a willy around this section depending on how fast you are. The second is the main reason we're choosing willy scooter. After getting shot out of the cannon, there's a large curve with enemies and turbo pads. The control of the willy scooter helps avoid the turbos while still being able to make the curve. The final issue is at the end, the very last corner, which is another U-turn. Most of the time with a single lap it won't be an issue, but if your racing kite is slower or your lap counter is higher, there tends to be a lot of enemies stuffed in this corner. After clearing that checkbox out, I moved on to a particular time attack in Magma Flows that also took me quite a lot of retries. Beating the time with 3 minutes and 15 seconds with Shadow Star required a lot of learning what is and is not faster. I'm pretty sure they intended for you to use the wing ability in various sections to get a faster speed, but there's definitely enough time saved to do it without. Shadow Star goes a bit faster in the air, so I took advantage of that and glided where possible. Especially over the section with multiple paths as you get a lot of time saved by gliding over the top. Something I hadn't really paid much attention to until now is that you get a speed boost if you spit out an enemy or spin into them. This time attack has quite a tight time frame, so you do need to hit every rail and boost that you can, and additionally stay in the air when possible to get your speed up in order to make the time. Just keep in mind the enemies in your first corner and near all the boost pads, making sure you don't inhale them. With a mostly flawless attempt, you should make it just in the right amount of time. Rex Willy on Machine Passage is yet another time attack, and out of all the goals, these time attacks seem to be the overall hardest. Rex Wheelie doesn't turn well, and Machine Passage has a lot of tight turns we've already mentioned. This time attack requires three laps, and the enemy placement on each lap is a bit different. You can help protect from inhaling enemies in the corner by spinning the ones in it before drifting. The last few turns of this lap in particular has loads of Plasma Wisps, making drifting into it near impossible. The difficulty isn't so much in hitting the time, but in avoiding everything. My biggest suggestion is to practice and remember where enemies spawn and when you can drift especially in the last three turns, since when you can drift and when you should spin are quite different per lap. For example, on the first two laps, you actually want to start drifting earlier than you hit the corners and try to cut them sharp, but on the last lap, you want to swing the corners wide or try to get a boost from spin killing the enemies as you go into them. I won't get into as much detail about the two lap time attack in Checker Knights, but I did want to point out that it's quite difficult and you should probably use the wheelie bike for this goal due to its turning and speed capability. Most of the issue once again lies in a couple of turns that are routinely stuffed with willy enemies, which, if we could have used them, would have made this one a lot easier. Oh, and make sure you jump the wall in the straight before the end. 
you'll waste a lot of time trying to make the actual curve, so jump over and save yourself some time. And once again, we're back at Machine Passage. This course just loves being difficult. This time, it's just for the two lap time, which is done on the standard race with CPUs. We've established that there's a lot of turns here that you need to drift around, and the swerve start being unable to turn without drifting seems contradictory to our needs for this one. However, due to the enemy placement in the regular race, and the speed of the swerve star, you can hit most corners before the enemies do. Additionally, on the turn that sweeps and has enemies, you can just ride along the wall. Even though this slows you down, you're still fast enough with the swerve star to make up for the lost time. If you do need to turn on these, you can tap drift lightly to turn while being cautious of what's around you. You can pick up another quick checkbox by using an earlier cheese on Beanstalk Park. Set the lap counter to something high and spit out the garbage enemies. After you've quote unquote swallowed 20 garbage enemies, you'll get the checkbox for swallowing enemies even though we totally didn't. We haven't featured a character other than Kirby yet, and I'm happy to finally get some usefulness out of one of them. Grab Meta Knight and go to both Sky Sands and Frozen Hillside, kicking the lap counter to something fairly high. There's a goal for clearing out the coral and ice platforms in each. Doing the coral with a standard machine would have been much harder and time consuming, but Meta Knight makes quick work of them. And while you don't need a sword for the platforms on Frozen Hillside, I simply misread the goal, so I took them anyways. And why not, right? We haven't been able to use Meta Knight or King DDD, so at least we get to use them for something. To no one's surprise, there's yet another time attack that is quite difficult. Beanstalk Park in 3 minutes with the Rocket Star. Another one that intends for you to get the wing ability to assist when making this time. To start out, boost 2 times to get some initial speed. You want a good start, otherwise simply restart, since this one has quite a tight window for making it a time. Riding the rail early on in the track helps give good initial speed and you can hit a turbo right out of it. Also, you'll want to take the Beanstalk on every lap as it's faster with the Rocket Star and you can start charging up a boost before getting picked up by it. Coming out of the spiral from the beanstalk, I'd use another charge boost to get some speed and try to carry that speed by hitting the maximum possible amount of rails in the next one. If you come out of the first lap with a perfect lap, you'll still have a time of over a minute, and you need each lap to take under one minute since we have a total goal of three minutes. The second and third laps run the same, but since you don't start off charging like in the first one, you can make up for a small amount of lost time. This one has to be raced pretty perfectly, but on the later two laps there are some groups of garbage enemies that you can get some small boost from to help you out. It took me around an hour of retries, but after learning the positioning of things I managed to pull it off. At this point, most of the hard goals have been covered, and there's only 7 left on the list, so let's tackle the absolute worst checkbox of this whole run. You'd think, hey, it's something related to abilities or swallowing enemies, but you'd be wrong. It's yet another time attack but this time with the Warp Star and on Checker Knights. You're given a time of 3 minutes and 55 seconds to beat, which seems like quite a high number, but let me assure you that this is the hardest one to beat by far. You see, Warp Star has no gimmicks like other machines. You're not super fast on rails, though you are a bit faster. There's no auto turbo on the turbo pads or increased speed while gliding. This goal most certainly intends for you to use the Willy ability and to be able to drift around corners. One thing you might think could help is to expose the shortcuts and save some time with them, but Warp Star does very little damage to the shortcuts so you waste time trying to open them. So what kind of cheese strategy did I find to help with this? Well, I didn't find one. This goal comes down to just learning every bit of the track and how to take it optimally, especially since the enemy spawns on each lap are completely different. I will give you some general tips though. In the start, you can drift on the ice patches without really losing much speed. It's not a huge time save, but good luck making time if you don't use it. You'll want to grab the turbo pad instead of getting a boost from the garbage enemies in the third turn. In general, the best bet is try to cut every turn as tight as possible in the first half of the track. On each lap before the rails, you can fight a bunch of enemies and get a pretty decent boost off of spinning into them and hitting as many as possible. Once you get to the bottom section, you'll want to take the outer rail and then the inner rail. I tested the opposites, but this path is faster than the others. Watch this next section carefully. I experimented with it a bunch, and if you lightly tap drift while you're on a near vertical wall, but starting to go downwards, you'll get a small speed boost. You need to get it on all three of these turns on all three laps to make time. Once out of the lower section there are spin pads, but you can't use the optimal route each lap. On lap one, you want to take this path to ensure to save as much time as possible. However, on the other laps, only hit them when there aren't enemies nearby, since you need to hit the drift button to trigger the spin pad. 
When heading off the platform into the pipe, keep gliding to help save some time in the pipe curve. And before you exit it, you can get airborne again to help avoid some of the enemies and get a small bit of extra speed. Before entering the next corner, take out what enemies you can and set yourself up to hit each turbo pad. If you get decent speed, you should be able to hop over the turn and get back on more turbo pads, which is a tremendous time save over all three laps. This is the general strategy I used, but it did require around 5 hours of retries on the single time attack to get an attempt that finally made it in time. So if you're trying this one, be warned it could take a lot of time because this is definitely the hardest of all the time attacks. There are 6 goals left and we have 5 free check boxes. I noted earlier in the run not to use the free check boxes, and you may think I intend to do it without them, but that isn't quite possible. See, a few of the goals require us to swallow specific ability enemies a certain amount of times which is directly against the rules of the run. This leaves two checkboxes left that we could in theory get, namely KOing some enemies with Tornado or swinging your sword exactly 10 times and taking first. I had an idea for choosing the sword one. Using Meta Knight I didn't need to get the sword ability, and racing on Nebula Belt meant it was easier to control how many times I would swing my sword. Unfortunately though, the game doesn't seem to count Meta Knight's sword swings toward this goal. However, this goal and the Tornado Kirby one are definitely doable even with our run's restrictions, but I suggest going for the Tornado Kirby one as you don't have to worry about KOing an exact amount and potentially taking out too many. While we can't swallow the collar enemies to get the Tornado ability, there is a hidden copy chance well on Celestial Valley. One issue left though is that there's no way to guarantee which ability we'll get from the chance will on any given lap. So in probably the most painful way you'll ever see this particular checklist goal done, I decided to bump the lap counter to 40. See, with enough laps the chance of getting the tornado ability multiple times raises, and if we drop the number of CPUs down to 1 and give them some machine that's horrible at this course, we even have time to turn around and get the copy well again on some laps. You can use any machine for this, but I highly recommend Wingstar. Due to its gliding abilities, it makes turning around to pick up an ability a second time much easier, and some machines definitely wouldn't be able to get back up at all. After a bit over an hour long of a race, I had picked up enough KOs with the few times I got the tornado ability to close out checkbox 115. You could get the sword checkbox with this method as well, but since we have 5 free checkboxes left, there's no need. The other four remaining ones I would love to do, but they require us to break the rules to get and I wasn't able to discover any cheese for these. So I closed out the last five boxes with the freebie boxes and finished the full checklist and the run. I honestly had a lot of fun with this challenge and if you're interested in running a challenge of your own, I would highly recommend this one as it didn't take the huge amount of time investment as the runs I've done so far. If you enjoyed this run, consider dropping a follow, like, or checking out my Twitch where I stream all my runs live before you know if they're possible. If you'd like to see more Kirby challenges, drop a comment below and I'll try to come up with another unique run that hasn't been done. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.